In Web3, private key security is one of the most important concerns to ensure that all your smart contracts and funds are safe. As developers, this is especially important because compromised private keys can mean entire projects that affect multiple people get compromised. Unfortunately, due to the nature of the development process, we often can't afford to just keep private keys in solutions like cold storage and hardware wallets because we'll often want to take private keys and actually do actions on chain with them, like using them in scripts to deploy contracts or using them in code to interact with contracts and make on-chain transactions. And so as a result, we often resort to solutions like copy pasting private keys into environment variables just so that we can get them to work in scripts. Now, unfortunately, this is a huge security red flag because your private key is now lying on a file in a computer. So imagine someone gets access to your computer, they can then get access to your private key or someone somehow hacks your computer or even worse, you accidentally commit the file to something like GitHub or version control and then your private key is completely leaked. So this is a super huge security risk. And that's why in this video, we're gonna be going over the best practices in private key security for developers. And more specifically, we're gonna be looking at how you can use cloud provider solutions to keep your private keys safely encrypted in the cloud. And then we're going to be using them with the third web SDK to see how easy it is to execute transactions and use those secured private keys in scripts. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Now, before we get into the build, I just wanted to mention that most of the people watching this video aren't subscribed. If you're getting any value from the video or you like our channel and want to support us, definitely leave a like and subscribe because we're going to be consistently posting more high quality Web3 educational content. So I'm now on the actual AWS website and we're we're going to take a look at the solution we're going to be using here, which is AWS KMS. So I'm just going to come over here to security, identity, and compliance, and we should see AWS key management service right here. So what this does is it lets us create and secure an encrypted private key uh, for which we're going to store our Ethereum private key. And it's just going to be in the cloud and nobody will actually be able to access it. And so the nice thing is we're not even going to pull this private key into a script from AWS and then use it there, the private key will actually never leave the cloud. And the way that it works is whenever we want to have this private key sign a message, we just send up the message to where the private key is stored and it will sign it there, never even leaving uh, its encrypted storage and then send back the result to us. And we'll only, only be able to use that encrypted uh, private key in a signing request if we have the credentials to the AWS account. So I'm just gonna come over here and sign into my AWS account and then we will resume when I'm back. So here I am now on the actual KMS page and we see an option to create a key. So I'm gonna walk you through the process of actually creating a new Ethereum private key on KMS. And then we're going to go use that key in an actual script. So here we first have a couple options. So one is we get to choose whether this key is symmetric or asymmetric. And what that means is it's just the security private key standard for what type of key we wanna generate. So a symmetric key is a type of key that's used where if you want to encrypt a message, you use this key to kind of scramble the message and encrypt it. And then when you want to decrypt the message, you would use that same exact key to go and decrypt the message. So basically the significant thing there is that whoever knows the key can both encrypt and decrypt the message. So knowing the key means that you basically crack the protocol. Now that's actually different than how Ethereum keys work. And you'll notice because with Ethereum keys, you have a public and a private key. And so you have the public key, which everyone else is allowed to know, and that lets them interact with your sort of address. And then only you know the private key, which is the thing that needs to be secured. So this is what's known as asymmetric cryptography or asymmetric encryption. And so that's what we're going to select because we want the Ethereum uh, encryption method. And then the other thing we need to select here at the bottom where you see key usage is it says encrypt and decrypt versus sign and verify. And you could probably guess here what we're going to select. But encrypt and decrypt is for when you want to sort of encode messages securely. Whereas in our message, we want to sign and verify messages to show that a specific authority that owns the private key is actually authorizing a specific transaction to occur. And that's what we want to do on the blockchain. So I'm going to select this sign and verify method here. And then we have all these um, sort of hashing algorithms we can choose from, which are just the algorithm that this uh, key is going to use to sign whatever messages we send it. And it just so happens that the method used on Ethereum is compatible with this last option here. Not going to try to pronounce it, um, but uh, so we're going to select the last option, make sure it has P256K1 at the end of it. And so that's going to be compatible with the Ethereum key. And we're going to click next. And then we can create an alias for our key. I'll just call it third web video private key. Okay. And I'm not going to add any tags to it. 
And then the last thing I could do is just select who can control this key. All right, so now I'm on step five. I had to fast forward through steps three and four because it shows some roles in my specific AWS org. Um, but all you need to know there is it's gonna tell you who you wanna select to control the key. And you could just select the option for yourself. It will be very obvious uh, to control the key and be the admin for it. And now we're on the last step, so everything's set up for it. So we could just click Finish. And there's only one last thing I'll actually need here. So now it sent me to the dashboard and I clicked into my key. It should just be uh, the first option for you to click. And we see this ARN here, which stands for Application Resource Name. And we're going to need this to actually access our key. So I'm just going to copy that and everything else looks good. So now I'm actually going to create a script and I'm going to pull out my, ter my terminal here. So I'm going to create a new project. I'm just going to create it in my desktop. And I will create a new project called uh, Secure Private Keys. And I will enter that directory. And then I'm just going to open it up in VS Code so we can actually get started. So I've opened up my VS Code in the project. And now the first thing I'm going to do is just type yarn init to create a new package.json file and use all the default options. And then I'm going to add two packages. So the first one is the third web SDK. You can see I've specified a version here, but by the time this video is out, you should be able to just leave off this version and everything will work. And then the next thing I've specified is this Ethers AWS KMS signer, which we're going to use to actually connect to the AWS signer. So I'm just going to install those packages. And while we're waiting, I'm going to get started on the actual script. So I'm going to create an index.mjs file here, and I'm going to import two things. One is the third web SDK. And the next one is this AWS KMS wallet instance, which is going to allow us to actually get a wallet from that key in AWS KMS and connect it to our SDK. So I'm going to come here and import it from the SDK slash EVM slash wallets, uh, which is the place that it comes from. And now we can get started with our script. So first of all, we're going to do all of this in an async function. And you'll see why in a second. We'll just call this function. And so there's really only two steps here. The first step is to instantiate the wallet. So we just need to plug in our AWS credentials for that. So first, we'll type in the AWS region, which for me was US West 2. Uh, you can find this in the top right corner of your AWS console. And then the next thing we'll put is the key ID. And this is just that uh, ARN that we saw on the dashboard. So I'm going to go back over there and actually copy the ARN. So I've now copied the ARN. I'm just going to paste it in here. And then the last step that we want to do is we actually need to paste in our AWS credentials. Now, this may be your personal account credentials, or it may be you know, your IAM role credentials. And the reason this is nice is because right now we're going to paste this in an environment variable. You may be thinking, well, how is this better than having a private key in an environment variable? Because now the these uh, keys can get compromised. But the real part is you can assign roles to these credentials in AWS. And you can have it so that if you're running the script in a EC2 AWS server, for example, you can configure it so that you never actually need to pass in these keys or store them in environment variables because AWS will actually pass them in for you. And so then you actually have a super secure setup where your keys are never pasted anywhere. But in this case, I'm going to add in my AWS credentials. So we're going to do access key ID and take this from environment variables. ID, and then I'm going to use a secret access key, and it's going to pull that from environment variables as well. And now that we have this wallet instantiated, we can actually just pass it into the SDK um, by instantiating a new SDK with the third web SDK dot from wallet function. And we're going to specify one to pass in the wallet we just created, and second, what chain we actually want to instantiate the SDK on. So in this case, I'm going to create it on Gurley. And then the last thing we could do is actually figure out this is just for the sake of seeing it, what the address of this wallet is. And the reason is because uh, when we went through that setup process, we never actually saw what the public key is. So all we have to do is call address, and we'll be able to see the address that's actually associated with the private key we created. And I'm just going to log that out. And so now you'll have a SDK instance with the private key 
that you created from AWS KMS, and you could do any types of transactions you normally would with this SDK. For example, if you wanted to deploy a contract, you could do sdk.deployer. And then you'll see all these options for contracts you could deploy. Or you could interact with any smart contract by doing the sdk.getContract function. Um, if you have the ABI, you can pass it in and interact with any contract this way. But we'll keep it simple for this video. So now that it looks like everything's installed, the last step we have to do is actually add in these environment variables. So I'm going to add the .env package. And then I'm going to actually uh, run this config function from .env to add in those environment variables to this file. And then lastly, I'm going to create the .env file to actually add in my environment variables. And so I'll call them as we call them in the file. So AWS access key ID and AWS secret key, secret access key. And of course, I'll fill these in uh, off the video so you don't see my keys. Um, but with that, we're going to come back over here. And once I put in the keys, we can run this file and everything should work. All right, so I've went ahead and added my keys to the environment variable file for AWS. And now we can actually run the script and see what happens. I'm just going to do node index.mjs. And the last thing, which I forgot to do, is actually add the .env package. So I'm going to do that with this function. And we'll just wait for that and come back when it's done. All right, so the .env package is now installed. So let's try and run the script again. Yes. Last package we need to add, which is causing that error, is if we run that again, it will tell us the error again. So because the SDK uses this package, I'm going to need to install this other AWS package as a peer dependency. All right, and now that everything is installed, I can just run my script again. And hopefully, if everything is working as planned, then we should just see the address console logged here. And in that case, we'll know that we've successfully connected the private key to uh, our SDK. And we can now do any on-chain transaction or interact with any smart contract through this secured private key SDK. So we'll just run the script. And we should see the address pop up here. Yep, so there we go. So there's the address of that key we just created on AWS. And so now we have successfully connected an AWS KMS encrypted key to the Third Web SDK in just a few simple steps. So that's all for the video. Hope it was helpful for everyone and thanks for watching. Now, if you wanna get extra help or join our community of awesome Web3 developers, uh, you should join our Discord community. The link will be in the description. But other than that, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.